Hello and welcome back to Artful Bytes. In the last video I talked about the software architecture of this Sumo robot and in this video I'm going to continue talking about organizing software. But instead of talking about how to organize the functionality, I'm going to talk about how to organize the files and how to create a good directory structure for those files. Because when you move beyond simpler projects, not only does code complexity increase, but so does the number of files. And it doesn't take that many until you want to put those files into separate directories to make your project easier to navigate. And if you have any sort of OCD tendency, like me, you may even start chasing after the perfect directory structure. Unfortunately, I'm here to tell you that there is no best directory structure. Not only is it going to depend on the specific of your particular project but it's also going to come down to your personal preference. Even if we narrate only embedded systems based on C or C++, there are still many technical factors that may affect the directory structure or you may be depending on an operating system, an RTOS or embedded Linux. Are you using a particular test framework or build system? Do you have a specific development environment? Are you a dog or a cat person? Well, maybe the last one doesn't directly affect the directory structure, but my point is that even after you sorted out the technical specifics of your project, you may still decide to go with one structure over another just out of personal preference. So while I have some good reasons for the structure I'm going with in this project, I think you should only look at this for inspiration and use whatever structure that makes sense for your project. Also, this is a small project that is only going to involve 20 or something files, and at that small scale it's not going to make much practical difference whatever structure you go for. But even at this small scale I still like to put some effort into my layout. Before I decided on a structure for this project I was curious to see what other people use for their C and C++ projects. So I did some searching on the internet and found a couple of examples that I thought worth mentioning in this video. The first one I found is a structure called the Pitchfork Layout. And this layout is an attempt to formalize a layout based on the author's professional experience but also on the opinion of several C++ communities including Reddit. And I think this layout does a pretty good job at capturing and explaining some of the common patterns that I've seen in many C and C++ projects. And judging by the comments it seems to be well received and there seems to be many people using some flavor of it. And the structure I'm going with for this project is also going to be similar to this layout. Another example I found is one called the canonical project structure and this is a structure proposed by someone in the C++ committee tooling group. And while this layout mainly focuses on C++ packages and only some aspects of the layout, I still think it's a worthy read. Besides these two, I also found other good examples and I put all of these examples in the description below. I'm not suggesting you should follow any of these uh, examples blindly and only look at them for inspiration but I also think there is a point in trying to adhere to what other people are doing because then your project will be more familiar to more people. So let's now get to the structure that I came up with for this project. And just to remind you, this is a smaller microcontroller project that is going to be written in bare metal C and I'm going to build it with make. So this is what I've had in mind when I came up with this structure. Okay, so starting from the top of the project, the lobby of the project, so to speak. As you can see, I've created a couple of directories here and only have a few individual files. While I don't like to overdo it with the directories, I still like to have a clean lobby to make the most important things easy to find. Because the first time you go into a project, what you're likely to search for is going to be some sort of documentation, maybe the readme, and you want to know how to build the project and that's going to be the make file. And then you probably want to find the source files and this lobby makes it easy to find all of that. And the most important directory here is arguably the source directory which contains all of the source files. I decided to put all of the source files into the same directory, the implementation files as well as the header files. Some people keep their headers in a separate directory but I don't like to do that and just find that annoying. There may be good reasons for doing that in other projects such as if you're creating a library and want to place the header files in another directory but for this project I see no good point for doing it. Furthermore I've created a couple of subdirectories because as I explained in the last video about the software architecture I made a clear distinction between the app layer and the drivers layers and I thought it made sense to also reflect this division in the folder structure and that's why I have a folder called app and drivers. Of course everything is not going to fit into those two folders and there's going to be some code shared between the two folders and for this I've created a third directory called common where I put all of the common code but actually it's not going to be that much common code it's mainly just going to be some common defined. I also have a directory called test and as I've said before I'm not going to do any unit tests in this project but I am going to have a test file with some functions that I can run to test isolated parts of the code and I'm going to place this uh, file under this directory. Well you will see what I mean later on when I start writing code. Of course I could have gone even further with the subfolders here and maybe divided into folders based on functionality but I'm also aiming for simplicity. I don't want to include too much navigational overhead or too much indirection when including header files and I think it's important to have simplicity in mind because while you can come up with a structure that makes conceptually sense more importantly you should ask yourself if it's actually practical. I also 
thought about not having any folders at all because since there's only going to be 20 or something files, even having four folders seems like kind of a stretch. But I decided that I at least wanted to have some division, but that's just my personal preference. Also, if I didn't have any folders, then I wouldn't have anything to talk about. Another thing I like by having the folders here in the source director is that it makes it very easy to find the entry point of the project, which is the main file here. So moving on to the next top directory, I have a directory called external, and this directory is supposed to hold any external code that I depend on in this project. And for this project, it's actually only going to be one project, and that is the stripped down printf implementation I'm using when sending log traces over UART to my host computer. And since this is an open source Git project, I like to include that unchanged as a Git submodule, so it's obvious where it came from and which commit I'm using. And then I have a folder called docs, uh, which is short for documentation. And there's not going to be that much documentation for this project, and most of the written documentation is going to fit inside the readme file. But I do have some documenting pictures of the project, uh, for example, the hardware block diagram as well as the software architecture diagram. And I thought it was suitable to put these pictures under the documentation folder. I also include a picture of the finished project, besides just having them under this directory. I also refer to them in the readme, because I find it really nice to see some images when I visit the project on GitHub. And I think images are often underestimated. And then I have a directory called tools, and this directory is meant to hold any related scripts or tools that is useful for the project. Right now, I don't have anything particular in mind to put under this directory. I created it just in case. Lastly, as I mentioned in the makefile video, I have a directory called build, and this directory is meant to hold any files that are generated when I build the project. It's just nice to have a separate directory for these files to avoid littering the rest of the project. It also makes it easy to remove them as well as ignore them with git. And that's it for the directories. As for the individual files, they are pretty self-explanatory. I have a readme that's going to include some explanation of the project, how to set it up and how to build it. I have a make file that I've already gone through in a previous video, and this file explains how to build the project. And then I have a license file, which is a text file that holds the license, uh, which describes what you're allowed to do with the code if you decide to use it. And next there is the git ignore file, which holds a list of files and directories that git should ignore. I will talk more about this in a coming video where I explain how to version control with git. Finally, I have a file called clang format, and this file holds the coding style I'm adhering to in this project. And this file enables me to run a command called clang format to auto format all my code according to my coding style. I will demonstrate this later on in the video series. For an embedded system, you probably also have some uh, hardware related files such as the PCB design files, and you could put them under the same project directory as your software files, but I prefer to have them under a separate project directory and repository, but that's also just my personal preference. Another thing I should mention is the naming convention I follow when I name my directories and my files. Two main rules I follow, no capitalization and no spaces, and this is mainly to make it easier to navigate the project from the command line, because it makes tab completion smoother. I've also seen some issues with having spaces in file names in the past, so instead of spaces I'm using underscores. And also, honestly, I just think it looks better. Okay, so I think that was all I wanted to say about this skeleton structure. And this became a pretty short video, because there is not really that much to say. And the main takeaway here is that there is no best directory structure, and it's going to come down a lot to your personal preference. Especially for a simpler project like this that doesn't have hundreds or thousands of files, then it doesn't really matter in the end which structure you go for. But I like order, so by creating a few directories I got to scratch my orderly itch, but in the end I could as well have put everything under the same directory. So don't overthink this one, be reasonable and go for something simple. That was all for now, see you in the next video.